Hello guys, this is Amon Kidwai with the UConn blog. I'm here with current UConn head coach Kevin Ollie and of course former UConn head coach Jim Calhoun. Uh, Kevin and Jim are here uh, doing some work with Dump Men Plus Care, uh, but they were kind enough to take some time out of their day to talk a little bit about their relationship, how they met, how they have become you know, such close friends, in addition to working together and of course uh, the moment where Calhoun was able to hand the program down to Kevin Ollie. So um, thank you guys both for joining me. Really appreciate uh, taking the time and speaking with you guys. Great pleasure. My pleasure. So I want to start uh, with you, Jim. Uh, you know, when did you meet Kevin Ollie for the first time? Well, I met him on the court before I met him. And then, I mean, he was playing summer basketball. How did you get a chance to see him play at the Williams tournament, actually? And uh, he talked about this kid who went coast to coast, played tough, and had a we call it 110 motor, more than 100%. Whole game, didn't take a playoff, and was a kind of special guy. We were recruiting quite a few point guards at that time, and we had an opportunity to, to hone in and eventually get a visit. It was the September of 1990, to go out and see Kevin and his mom, and kind of went from there. And uh, Kevin, what, you know, what would make somebody from LA mm -hmm. want to travel all the way across the country, not just that, but then to go play in, in stores Connecticut? Um, I think the wonderful thing about Storrs, Connecticut, it was different than the environment I grew up in. Uh, growing up in South Central California, you had a lot of different things, um, a lot of obstacles you had to get over. Um, and I took my visit here. Um, never seen cows before. Uh, first time I got over the hill, I seen cows. And what really got me was the milkshake. Uh, they, they gave me a milkshake, and then it was a, a fight that broke out in practice. Um, <laughs> and coach didn't stop it. So I was like, it's just like my neighborhood. So, you know, I just uh, I fell in love with the program right then and there. I fell in love with coaches, his toughness, and what he gave to his players. Um, more than just, you know, being tough on a basketball court, it's being tough in life and uh, respecting your teammates. And um, that's the one thing I've seen in him. And I've seen the family atmosphere that he had. And I just fell in love with the program. I fell in love with him as a person. Um, as a father figure to me, and the rest is history now. Absolutely. So, you know, you spent four years at UConn. Um, you know, obviously, I'm sure you take a lot from that experience into being a coach now. Uh, what were some of the things that you take from your experience playing at UConn that, that you do take into coaching? Um, you know, just the strength that you have to have um, as a basketball player, but the strength you have to have as a coach, uh, the impact that you have of, of you know, with people around you and how you can affect them in a positive way. You know, as a coach, um, I learned that from coach. I learned resiliency, um, how to respond to an event that you can't control. Uh, those are different things that I learned through, through our program and through Coach Calhoun. Just never give up. And, you know, he always, he told me um, when I first met him that he was going to be the toughest person in the gym. And I was like, no, I'm from L.A. I think I'm pretty tough. But after a week of his practices, I was like, Coach, you are the toughest person <laughs> I've ever met. And, um, you know, he really gave us that strength each and every day of our lives. And, you know, not to give up on ourselves and not to give up on our dreams. And even when we felt like giving up, he pushed us through. And um, I think that's what we have that special bond. If you come through University of Connecticut, you come through Connecticut, you got a special bond. It's through practices, it was through the things that we, you know, felt as a brotherhood. You know, I think, you know, he gave us all that common denominator, which was us and not 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 me. It was us as a team and as a program. And, and no one was bigger than the program. We learned that from coach each and every day. Jim, when when he was a player for you, did you see signs that he might be uh, coaching material down the road? Well, the good news is that I saw a lot of different signs, and I saw he was a leader. That's number one. He led by example as well as, as, as speaking about it. But he showed up every day. If I brought a point guard in to beat him out, Kevin picked him up in the locker room. Without any, he got on him and played him for two hours and wouldn't let anybody beat him up. And I think when Kevin talks about perseverance, win every day, he's a classic example of a guy who tries to win every day. I saw this guy someday because he really understood the game, had a great feel for the game, and a great passion for the game. I thought there was more chance, and it's a real positive thing, that he would be a coach than an NBA player. But Kevin, in a lot of his life, has always proven people wrong in a good way. In the sense, he just wouldn't he keep that same perseverance he had as a player. He took that into the CBA and other places, 
He made himself into an NBA player. And he was so smart, he understood what it took. Great teammate, great person, leadership, all the kind of things. And cared, cared about the situations he was in. He didn't know other ones, nor should he. He honed in, and that's a, be able to focus like that's an unusual gift. And so I did see the coaching. And he, I didn't take shot by any stretch. He's a very good player. But, but surprising me just how effective he was in the NBA. And how did you, you know, you were obviously very busy coaching UConn at the time, and you were trying to make, uh, you know, your career in professional basketball. How often were you guys in touch, uh, you know, during that time after you leave UConn, uh, you know, while you're, while you're trying to play professionally? Um, the thing that I, you know, you see in coaching, but, I mean, it's after you leave. Um, I think a coach does his best coaching job then because everybody sees those four years you at stores or, or three years because sometimes our players left. But it's the, the call when you get from coach um, when you have your first kid, you know, um, when, you, when, you, when you're on your wedding day and he shows up there and sitting in the first aisle. I think that's what makes a true coach. It's not just the basketball. It's what's underlying in the basketball is the person. And coach was always a person that was always there for me. I didn't get drafted. Um, I played right here in the CBA in Connecticut. And, you know, him showing up at games, not the NBA games where you get all the fanfare, but him showing up in the armory watching me play meant the world to me. And when I got my first chance to just hear coach say he's proud of me, that's the only thing you want to hear. Um, every day. And um, when he said he's proud of me, no matter if I made the NBA or not, he's proud of the man I became. You know, that's, that goes a long way to me. Well, perseverance, and let's get back to it with Kevin. You know, the number one thing about coaching, Kevin's finding this out now as a coach, is character. You've got to care about folks. And so, you know, you love their jump shot, you love the fact they can shoot, jump, and all those kind of things, but you love the fact they care about each other. And eventually, they care about themselves and understand the better I am, the better everybody else around me is. And that's a really important attack. I mean, very few people have that ability to, to get their stuff squared away so they in turn can help others. And Kevin was great at that. And we did communicate. Kevin, after every season, came and we talked down, should I keep pursuing this? And do you want to? Do you think you can? I asked him hopefully good questions. He always had the good answer because he said, I can do this. And he did. Great. So, you know, you mentioned earlier, um, you were talking about some of the tough practices you had, uh, you know, <laughs> under, uh, under Calhoun. You, of course, have, have developed a little bit of a reputation for, for having tough practices as well. Who runs a tougher practice, Kevin Ollie or Jim Calhoun? No, Coach runs a tougher <laughs> practice. Um, really? You know, the, know thing, <laughs> yeah, the thing that uh, made coaches practice tough, um, he used to walk through a door, and it was a long, slow walk, and we used to have to clap for him. Um, that's a true story, and I'm like, why am I clapping for him? And he's about to run me about three hours of a hard <laughs> practice and call me some things that, you know, that off the record that, that, that we didn't want to be called. But it was just like, man, we honor him coming through this door because we knew he gave everything he had for not only us but for this program and the great opportunity we had to play for this state and play for – a great Connecticut team and the care that he had for us. Um, and a lot of people don't see that. They see the tough three hour practices, but they don't see the real man. Um, I'm a for fortunate, all the players that came through Connecticut is fortunate to see the real man, the caring man that he is, that he cares about his players, his family, uh, his wife, Pat, um, all his beautiful grandchildren. Um, and even in coaches meetings, we used to always kid like, Bring the grandchildren in so we can maybe get out of here uh, after uh, like a seven-hour meeting. So, you know, we always wanted the grandchildren to come in because he was just such a different person around me. I mean, I really seen the real man um, around his family. And that's what I get. Everybody say you get the basketball for him. Man, yeah, I do. But I see the caring man that he was around his family. And family is first in, in, in Connecticut and family is first in our, in our lives. And I learned that from, from, from uh, Coach Calhoun. Now, uh, Kevin's not the only former player of yours uh, currently coaching. Um, Scott Burrell is a head coach. Uh, Daniel Marshall is a head coach. Obviously, his, his entire staff is uh, from UConn. Um, I get, you know, it's kind of similar to the question about just Kevin earlier, but does it, does it surprise you, or did you see this happening, you know, that so many of your former players uh, are getting into coaching? Well, good, bad, or different, I think it's good. Uh, there was a love for the game and a passion for the game. 
we felt at UConn, and I was, obviously it was something that we tried to develop in the culture, that we were kind of special. We're not better than you, but we're kind of special in our own sense. And we try to develop that. And Kevin hit it right on, on, on the head by saying, that guy's got to care about each other. You know, it's nice to be I, but I want to know where the we is. Everybody knows where I is. I want to know where we is, because we win. I helped, but we win. That's not great grammatic English, but it's 100% true. And I just think that, you know, Kevin could have mentioned he is better than family. We're a family, my own family. But the UConn basketball team is always been my thing. I was on the phone to Chile to one of my former players this morning. Stanley uh, Robinson. Robinson. I keep on going to some of the kids. And, 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 and Kevin now is doing the same kind of thing as the UConn head coach, which he's done a great job with. But he's doing that to reach out and make these guys feel, come back home. And the more they feel that way, the better kids that keep coming here, the more they, they're going to play different. They're going to play as a family. You know, as I, as I said before, it's, it's great to really like basketball, but if you care about each other, you're probably going to win more. So you mentioned it's a family, um, you know, when that family comes back to visit and they see this brand new house that you have, the, the lovely mm -hmm. practice facility, you know, what's the reaction from some of the guys maybe who played with you or around the same time as you when they see, you know, these these professional quality facilities and, and not just that, just where UConn as a whole, as a campus, as a school has come? I mean, I, I think it's wonderful, um, but I think they come back, and the thing that Coach Calhoun really made it special for us when they won their first national championship, and we came so close during my years, he made us all feel a part of it. So in 1999, when they raising that banner, he's calling us like, you know, we calling him, he's calling us, y'all a bigger part of it than just these players that's playing it. And that's what that facility is all about. It's not the players that's playing there now. I was like, y'all are, y'all are spoiled. Uh, we had to play over in Gamble and. It's the guys that played over in the old field house that, you know, uh, unfortunately we had to practice their first practice in, um, that, that legendary Coach Calhoun first practice in. But those guys played there. Um, I, I've heard stories of them practicing while the track team is running around the court. And I really feel privileged to have the honor to, to play at Connecticut, but also give back uh, to our future uh, student athletes and give them a place that they can call home. But I want them to cherish it because it's a lot of blood, it's a lot of sweat, it's a lot of tears that's on those, that's on that practice facility now that, you know, all those players don't have nothing to do with it, but I want them to cherish it. And um, I always try to bring it back to, you know, the, the family and the people that came in, that came through Connecticut to give you, you know, the players that's there now an opportunity uh, to have this beautiful facility and that they, uh, they understand that and really hold that true to their heart. If it wasn't for our initial players, Cliff Robinson for his NIT, 1987, 88. If it wasn't for those guys, there'd be no practice on it. Mm -hmm. There wouldn't be four national championships. They build the building blocks and, 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 and the real tight, tight things, UCLA, out in Oakland, all the tough, almost we had, uh, were, were building blocks for us to finally get there. That's why when people said, do you think you're ever going to get there? Of course we are. Mm -hmm. We kept knocking on the door and it finally opened for us and we were ready for it when it did open. I just think that's a important thing. I think in life, you're always going to be ready. If you keep knocking on that door, when it does open, okay, take advantage of it. And our kids did. So it goes back to the first group of kids I had here in 86, 87, to Kevin's present team, the Yukon, the Yukon family. And to us, that's incredibly important. I think for everybody, family is the most single important thing that sets the basis of your whole life. So we got one more question. Okay. Um, and I want to ask, you know, Kevin Ollie is playing career, uh, winding down, um, and I guess it, it, both of you, but it, what I'm getting at is kind of how, how did Kevin end up at, uh, as an assistant coach on your staff? Um, you know, how did, that, how did that come about? Well, I recognized certain things. I knew that the, staff, that the program had grown, at least nationally, you know, we needed a lot of responsibility. But I thought of two, a couple things we really need. We need someone who cared. We need someone who was smart. After that, we needed someone who was tough. Tough mentally to manage the program, as Kevin's found out. You manage this program that's, that's endeared by the state. The state loves you, and, and they expect you to be certain things in this program. I had plenty of guys I, I think I could have taken, but at that point in time, I'm thinking, okay, I'm about ready to step down here. And Kevin became, for me at least, a logical successor to carry on the program because he had been such an integral part of our program. He had stayed with the whole time. He stayed in touch with me. I don't mean me personally, but me by that, I mean the program. And so I 
said, uh, I got now got go out one more recruit. I, I recruited him out of Crenshaw High School in LA. Mm -hmm. Now I got to recruit him from the Oklahoma City Thunder because they wanted him out there, and rightfully so. Leader, hard worker, loyal, and you, you cannot work. That's one of the great things. You cannot work him. So I was able to recruit him back to Yukon because I thought the biggest thing I could appeal to was come back home to the family because someday you're going to be in charge of the family. What was that like for you? You know, you had this opportunity with the Thunder. Um, you know, what made you decide to come to UConn? Hey, Coach said you recruited me. He, he didn't have to recruit me because, you know, I'm not self-made. I'm UConn-made. And when I got that opportunity, yeah, I had some options. But it goes back to my family. He discussed it. I wanted to be around my family that lives in Glastonbury. I also wanted to be around my second family, which is, which is UConn. And um, I had to play a little hard to get a little bit, you know. <laughs> I had to have weigh my options, but deep down inside, um, I was going to come back here because home is no place like home. And when I got the opportunity to come back and, and coach under uh, under under Coach Calhoun, I really understood the nuances of coaching. You know, as a player, you don't understand it. You go practice for three hours and then you leave. But what he had to endure and the pressures that he has endured. You know, the countless hours that he has to endure with his players to make them the best player they can possibly be, but also make this program the best poss possible program it can be. Um, I just even thought even higher of the man. Um, he was here, but I didn't even think he could get higher, but I was like, man, he's even higher. Uh, what he was going through, you know, what he, what he allowed us to, you know, have an opportunity. So I jumped to it, and, you know, when he stepped down, you know, I was like, you're not stepping down, coach. You just, we just locked arms in just a different way. You're going to always be an extension of me. And, you know, this program is going to always be yours. And, you know, I appreciate the baton and I'm going to run as fast as I can with it. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's about us. Um, it's not Kevin Ali program. It's not Coach Calhoun program. It's the UConn program. And that's what we, we, that's what we believe in. I think championships follow that. And, Proof is in the pudding. It's about toughness. It's about caring. It's about accountability. And, you know, I learned all those different things to this man that's sitting beside me. So can you tell us the nature of what you're doing with your Bonds of Real Strength campaign? I'll, I'll start off only by saying, when, we, when I talk to folks from Dove, they talk about care. We talk about heroes. I mean, everyday heroes, which are my favorite kind. It's great to see a guy score touchdowns. Great to see someone make baskets, hit home runs. But every single day in our lives, we run into heroes. People who make a difference in other folks' lives. And those are the real heroes. And I think when I heard that is what uh, you know, Dove Men's Care, Plus Care, is about, the campaign kind of falls into the right I mean, it, it, it's perfect. I mean, Dove Plus Care. Um, you know, you got Dove, but you got Plus the Care. And I think that's what makes it. Uh, that's what makes everything in life happen. That's the, the fulfillment of life is caring beyond yourself and the unselfishness that you have. And I think this is what these programs is all about. And like you say, it's heroes among us everywhere. And it's heroes in a community that you don't hear nothing about. Uh, it's players, not all of just the NBA players. It's the players that came through UConn. It's in a community now that's helping young kids. Um, and that's the true heroes. It's not about the person that hits the game winning shots all the time. It's about the person that's able to be picked up, able to pick their teammates up um, in a situation that they can't pick themselves up. And those are the true heroes that, that gives beyond themselves. And uh, that's what I wanted to be associated with. I think that's what this whole program is about. That's what Doug believe. It's about caring. It's about loving. And I think that's what this program embodies. And that's what this man embodies. And that's what, fortunately, I embody for him. And um, I think it's a perfect match. Excellent. Well, thank you guys so much for your time.